You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And uh, you can uh, find subscription to the links uh, to, uh, in the show notes for each and every episode online. Um, we've got uh, an Og Vorbis feed, an MP3 feed, and a video feed that you can s- subscribe to directly. Uh, you can also find us online at YouTube, Dailymotion, Blip.tv, uh, Vimeo, there's uh, StitcherRadio.com, and TuneIn.com, and there's a couple of other places uh, where my stuff shows up. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff for this episode. From uh, ZDNet, uh, in the, there's a, an article here by Stephen J. Von Nichols in the Linux and open source section, Linux reaches out to hobbyist developers. So uh, the summary here is Linux is largely written today by programmers working for large companies, but keeping in touch with its roots, the Linux Foundation is offering travel expenses to the next Linux kernel summit for Linux kernel hobbyist programmers. So I highly recommend if you're looking to go to the Linux kernel summit, I highly recommend that you check this out. It may be worthwhile, especially if you're kind of more along the hobbyist uh, developer type guy. I, I, you know, I don't work for a company that explicitly does Linux development per se. I mean, I do a lot of embedded Linux development, but it's not. Uh, it, it's for a a product that the company sells. It's not specifically for Linux, so. Uh, I kind of fall in with this. Any Linux development that I do outside of work, you know, is obviously not for work. But regardless, definitely check this out. Um, Maybe worthwhile. Maybe not. From IT World, running Linux on a Windows PC, your getting started guide. That's right. We have a kind of little getting started guide. Obviously, you know, a lot of newer Windows PCs have secure boot installed and stuff that's specific to running windows on it and getting you know a a linux distribution to run on that it can actually be quite difficult so this is kind of a quick little uh, getting started guide um you know it's not really as scary or different as you may think as the article points out the myth is that you had to have some kind of computer guru to use linux that's totally untrue a lot of the Linux, more modern Linux distributions, such as Mint, OpenSUSE, and Ubuntu, are easier to use than Windows 8. The trick is, particularly when you have Secure Boot, is getting it to actually install and making sure you've got drivers and all that other stuff. So anyway, I thought it was a pretty interesting read, particularly for those who may be looking to get into trying out Linux who haven't tried it out before. So definitely give it a read if you are in that camp. From Ars Technica, Raspberry Fly. What? Airware's Linux and ARM developer platform for drones. That's right. Pretty neat. Uh, The Federal Aviation Administration hasn't yet cleared the runway for unmanned aircraft to fly under any circumstances other than federal law enforcement, public safety, and a few experimental applications. But for those looking to take a flying leap into creating their own unmanned eyes in the sky. A Newport Beach, California company called Airware is trying to make it as easy as pie. Raspberry Pi, that is. So they have created a Raspberry Pi-based flight control system, if you will. Definitely pretty cool. Give this a read. Um, I'm sharing it because I thought it was cool. I'm into robotics and that sort of thing, and I think Raspberry Pi is a is a great entry into embedded development. So uh, definitely something to look into. From Polygon, Metro Last Light may see a Linux release. What? That's right. 4A Games post-apocalyptic shooter Metro Last Light may see a Linux release in the near future according to an update to the title spotted on Steam's database by NeoGAF user 
GNG F123. So pretty cool. Uh, not necessarily a game that I would play, but for those of you who are interested and want to play it on Linux, definitely worth looking into. From CanberraTimes.com.au down under in Australia. And I know I'm not speaking with an Australian accent. I just thought that would be interesting. Uh, digital media servers, Plex versus XBMC. So this is kind of a shoot off between the two. A home media server gathers your digital library and shares it with all your gadgets. Plex and XBMC both run on Windows, Mac, or Linux. They draw together your photos, movies, music, and TV shows from across your computer and network attached storage drives. They make your entertainment library easily accessible via DLNA from your internet-enabled TV, Blu-ray player, personal video recorder, games, console, and handheld ga gadgets. Both, both also offer add-ons to tap into streaming services such as Netflix and Hulu. So this basically gives a rundown of, the, of both of them. Um, definitely give it a look-see if that's something that you want to look into. From Electronic design.com there's an interview mentor graphics's chris hallinan discusses the yocto project that's right the yocto project helps developers turn out custom linux distributions based on common bit bake recipes the tools pull from hundreds of open source repositories based on a recipe brother recipe the project is designed to nullify the underlying or unify the underlying Linux support so that these custom configurations can be easily ported to any hardware platform. And that's really the magic in all this is getting something where you can have the same distribution and run it in a couple of different places. Uh, so Mentor Graphics is one of the companies that supports the Yocto project. This is really an interview with Mentor Graphics's Chris Hallinan. So definitely an interesting read. I thought it was pretty neat and would and thought it would be cool to share with my audience. So anyway, uh, check it out. From opensource.com, uh, there's an article here in their business section, Patterns and Practices for Open Source Software Success. And uh, this is some useful information um, for teams that may be trying to nail this down. How do you create a successful free or open source software project is one question that's asked, and there's some answers to that. Um, building an ecosystem. There's a YouTube video uh, kind of talking about this, so definitely take a look, see if this is something that uh, you're on, if you're on a development team and you're looking to do this sort of thing, uh, definitely check this out. Uh, that will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. We'll see you then. Bye.